Only an elite group of chefs holds two Michelin stars. Michel Roux Jr. is one of them. One lamb, two fish, go. Now he, Greg Wallace, and Monica Galletti are on the hunt for Britain's next culinary superstar. A professional with the talent to cut it in the world's top kitchens. Find the next cookery genius. Welcome to Professional MasterChef. This is it. It's seven separate ingredients. It's thinking time starts now. ...to stand out and you want me to notice you for the right reason. I haven't been a chef all my life, actually. I used to be a policeman before, back in France. I started as a kitchen porter, no shame in that <laughs> at all. And uh, I became a chef in four years. What brought you from France? I'm not classically trained as a chef. I'm a self-taught chef. Ah. So I thought I would, I would have more chance here. How did you teach yourself? What, what, how did oh, that just learning from other chefs. We try to keep the best and throw away the, the worst. What are you making? Chicken thigh wrapped in Parma, roasted, keep it simple, but classic. And I'm doing a rosti as well, and a bernet sauce and cream leeks. OK. Allez bleu. Allez les bleus. <laughs> George seems to be playing it safe. Something that sounds so simple, he cannot afford to mess it up. George's bacon wrap ballotine is served on a potato rosti with a Bernays sauce and creamed leeks. Ooh, that's sharp. George, the, the ballotine, very moist. I like the crispy bacon around that and it's nicely seasoned. Your Bernays is, is really sharp. It should be sharp, but I think that's just a, a touch too much for my liking. I don't mind the sharpness of, of your Bernays, but I don't like those leeks. It's just like a pot of leek-flavoured cream than it is creamed leeks. I didn't let myself down to learn by your mistakes. So, here we go. <laughs> Monica, skills test, I know. What is that and what have they got to do with it? This, Greg, is a beef kidney. I'd like to see them prepare it and I'm going to ask them just to cook us one portion and then serve it using any of the ingredients here on the table. George is originally from Burgundy, but for the last eight years has been head chef at a riverside restaurant in Oxfordshire. Hello. In the invention test, his Bernays sauce divided the judges. If you take cooking as just a job, then you won't go very far. You have to be passionate about your job, or I think you're wasting your time. George, you've got just 12 minutes. 12 minutes. Off you go. Thank you. You've got that kidney out in less than a minute. had four minutes. You're halfway. You've got six minutes left. You've got just two minutes, all right? You've got to serve. Thank you. Right, time's up. Oh, 
honestly, I look at it and I, I expect you to be actually appalled that you could serve that. Why the hell you put a whole lettuce on top is beyond me. You know, it's like you're ashamed of what's underneath it. Oh, George, there's no way I would accept that served up to me. You know, the blood of the kidneys running into all that cream, there's no way. Now, I tried a small piece of the kidney, which is cooked very well, and then you have the bigger piece, which is not cooked through. Okay, so that is why it's very important that when we do the kidneys, you have them all around the same size when you're cooking them. Funny enough, there's a, a nice back note of the Madeira, maybe a little more seasoning because you put so much cream in. George, it's not right. Off you go. Thank you. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> It is really disappointing. It is. I was expecting much more from myself. I let myself down a lot. Um. George worked in such a crazy way. The sauce wasn't right. You could see it when he started plating up and then top it off with a whole bowl of frisée salad on top of it. What was he thinking? I know I messed up today, but I would love another chance. You go to cook for Michel. He is expecting some talented chefs. You need to step up your game. For today's classic, I'm going to cook a potrousse bourguignon. That is a freshwater fish stew from Burgundy. I really hope our chefs are going to do this recipe justice. I always wish to be one of those chefs who are cooking for Michel and I have the opportunity so hopefully I won't let him down. Greg and Monica told me there were highs and lows in the skills test. Well, you wanted to cook for me, now's your chance to impress. I've been cooking classic dishes forever since I'm a chef, so cooking just a classic dish is not going to, to scare me at all. I think I'll feel very confident about it. Hello, George. Hello, chef. How are you? You've got a bit of an accent there. I have. I'm French, actually. You're French? From Burgundy, actually. But so I've nev never seen this dish before, actually. Beef bourguignon, yes, I've seen it, but... Are you sure you're from Burgundy? I am sure, <laughs> kind of sure, yes. <laughs> kind of sure? <laughs> no, I am. <laughs> Have you come across freshwater fish, though, before? Yeah, pike, perch, yeah. carp, because my dad used to, to fish a lot, actually, so... Yeah, yeah, me too. Georges, good luck with this potrousse bourguignon. Your native country calls you. <laughs> Thank you very much. George has used up the entire bottle of white wine to make his fish stew. It may be just so whiny that it's inedible. Final seven minutes. Taste, taste, taste. Come on. That's it. Time's up. Fini. George, now for you. It's served in a bowl, as it should be, and there's plenty of that broth there. The lardons are too big. They look uncouth. Remember, we're looking for elegance and finesse. The fish is well cooked, well seasoned. The onions are well cooked, golden a little bit on the outside, and they've got a bit of a crunch. Um, your croutons are bland. It should have a nice colour to them. You didn't put any mushrooms in there as well. I mean, guys, bourguignon. Classically trained or not, 
Lardons, onions, mushrooms. They scream out at you, don't they? Hey? George, your broth is too thin and wishy-washy. I noticed that you put a full bottle of wine in and I think you've added a lot of water into it to compensate. Too much. It's now almost tasteless. It's not a bad attempt, but it's not refined. And refinement is what I was looking for. Still disappointed to make silly mistakes, of course. But cooking for somebody like Michel Roux, he spots everything and just doesn't let go. But it's mistakes I won't make again. You cook your own classic dish. One hour. After this, one of you will be leaving us. Off you go. At my restaurant, I cook simple French classics, but we elevate them a little bit. So hopefully, Michel will appreciate that. Hi, George. Hello. What are you cooking for us? Loin of lamb with herb crusted sweetbreads, crispy cabbage, celery egg puree, and a red currant sauce. So why this dish, George? Well, it's something uh, quite close to my heart because where I come from in France, we eat loads of offals. It's a take on what my mom used to cook before. Yeah. What did you do before you were a chef? Oh, I was a policeman. Policeman in Paris. How much a nice one. And how much would it cost to get me off a speeding fine? A lot, I'm afraid. A place, a place in the quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. George's dish sounds quite simple, but actually he's picking ingredients that I absolutely adore. If it's cooked properly, beautifully presented, it's got to be enough. George has made loin of lamb with herb-crusted sweetbreads on a bed of crispy cabbage and celeriac puree with mustard frills and a red currant and raspberry vinegar sauce. It's very, very simple. <laughs> there, there really isn't much on this plate. I really like it. I, I love that style. I think it smacks of confidence. Thank you. For me and for most Frenchmen, that lamb is a bit overcooked. Should be a little bit more pink. The celeriac puree is nice and smooth and it's delicious. Cabbage, I'm not so keen on. It's almost verging on burnt and it's got that little caramelised taste, which is borderline bitter. Seasoning, bang on. Cooking-wise, a couple of mistakes here. That sweetbread with the zing of herbs picked up with a sweet sauce tasting slightly of raspberry is just lovely. But I would also like the lamb a little less cooked. I'd also prefer my cabbage not to have burnt bits. Apart from that, I, I, I think it's absolutely, absolutely lovely. I'm kicking myself quite a lot yeah, for, the, for that little bit of cabbage, yes. Because that shouldn't happen. It just shouldn't. That could be very costly, actually. Good. Each and every one of you can be very proud of yourselves today. Thank you. Off you go. George or Alec? In my round, George cooked the fish perfectly and seasoned it beautifully, but the broth was just insipid and wishy-washy um, and, it, and it just looked cumbersome and, and not refined. I really like George's uh, lamb dish. The sweet breads on top of lamb with a sweet sauce. I thought it was absolutely lovely, but I would have preferred my lamb pinker and there were burnt brown bits of cabbage. When you only have three or four ingredients on a plate, it has to be bang on. And I feel that's where it's let him down slightly. When you do something you shouldn't do, and you know you can do much better than that. There's nothing worse, I think. Mm. Chef leaving us is George. 
Thank you. It was amazing, amazing experiences. I don't feel like I should be sad from today. I'm quite proud. It was a good day.